Hello everybody, and welcome to an AP Computer Science A tutorial on the topic of recursion. Now, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. The reason why I decided to make this video, it's for the Facebook page, AP Computer Science A, but it's also to help out anyone who has trouble with recursion, since it actually is kind of hard to understand if you don't know how to actually walk through these steps. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So, what exactly is recursion? Recursion is when a method calls itself. In a sense, we'll just go ahead and show you what I mean by that. That is not what I want. You can have like int x, you know, then have a parameter, whatever. This is your method, then in your method you can have a call, like while some condition uh, do x with y. So you're calling this method inside of this, but you wouldn't you wouldn't use a while loop. I don't know why, but that since you already have a loop with recursion. But anyway, that's just a really basic example. All right, the base case in a recursion situation is the case the recursion call must satisfy in order to stop looping. I'll explain what that means in a second here. So let's see. Okay, so in this sense right here. We have public class recursion 3 and the run method and then our tester class. So our base case, this is our base case. And I know you can hear my mouse clicking, I'm sorry, but anyway. So this is our base case and so let's just go ahead and actually just run through what this code does. Alright, so in our tester class we have where we are making an object test of the recursion 3 class an object and we are running and we are running the run method on the test object and passing it a parameter 1 so that goes in here so we, we're going to check is x is 1 less than 5 yes it is so we're going to increment x by 1 so basically the first time through this recursion call x will be 1 and that will be placed on something known as an AR stack and what that is, I'll explain here in a minute. So let's actually, okay, let's let's get rid of that. Um, is there an eraser? In this? Yes, there is. Cool. So basically, I'll explain what the whole topic of a stack is in the AR calls and stuff in a minute. But just go with me for now. So AR calls work like this. You have like multiple different steps to them. So AR call one, AR call two. AR3, AR4, AR5. You don't know how many you're going to have, so let's just make it like that. We'll just have five for now. So on the first time through AR1, it will be passed one, right? Okay, so then you will run the run method again with x plus one. Well, what is one plus one? Two. So on the second AR pass, it would be 2. Since this would equal 2, you go back up here and put that for x. So you check again. Is x less is x less than 5? Is 2 less than 5? Yes, it is. So do it again. 2 plus 1. What is that? 3. So on the third AR pass, put it up again. 3. Go up here. Is 3 less than 5? Yeah. 3 plus 1, 4. Okay. Okay, go back up. Put 4, go back up, is 4 less than 5? Yes, it is. 5, so there's another AR call, AR6. We'll just put 6 up here for that. So, is 6 less than 5? No, it's not. Actually, wait. I think we could have stopped that. Yeah, um, yeah, ignore that, sorry. Um, so basically, what this will do is you may think, oh, it's going to print out 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, right? That is incorrect. The reason why is because the way AR calls work, they go from the top down. I'm sorry if you can hear that background noise. Um, they go from the top down. They don't start from the very bottom. They start from the top. So it would print out, like with the system that I print line statement, it would print 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that is the, right, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So here's what the stack is. When you call a method an AR, an activation record, that's a very terrible A. We'll make another one down here. 
that's even worse, whatever. So that method call is put on the stack and it keeps track of all parameters and arguments being passed as well as what the method returns. Make sure you know that. So basically for AR1 you have the method call. Then you have, because AR is placed on the stack first, it will be the last AR removed from the stack. Once you actually stop doing your recursive calls, it will go from the top down. So basically, however many AR calls you have, like AR583, it will go down 583, 582, all the way down to number 1. And after every AR call is finished, it will be removed, you know, all the way down to you get to here. So, let's just go ahead and show. Number 2, it will be the second last. Number 3, let's see, I'll actually deselect this. Four, so it will be it will be completed first, and then once AR is finished, the ex the execution sequence returns to AR three, three two, one, and after each call the method completes, the instance of that method is removed from the stack, because it was placed on the stack first, it's processed to completion last. Make sure you know that. Now, this is basically the same thing as before, so we'll run through it a little bit faster. So, in this example, you have one being passed, but this time the print line statement is above the line, or is above the recursion call. So, what's it going to do? You know, you're going to pass them one. It's going to print out one. Makes sense, right? So, is x less than five? Is one less than five? Yes, it is. So, it'd be one plus one on this AR call, it equals one. Actually, wait, let me make sure of that. Actually, in this sense, it doesn't. Um, you don't need to. You don't need to keep track of AR calls, just because. Um, since the print line statement is above this, the AR calls will still exist in memory, but it doesn't make any sense to keep track of them because you're not like you're not printing out afterwards. So in this sense, it would just be one, two, three, four, five, because after every call, X will be incremented by one. So on the second pass, it'd be two. Third pass, it'd be three. Fourth pass would be four, fifth pass would be five. And then once you get the six, you know you don't do anything. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So we'll have we have a method here with two parameters, int x and int y. Now, here's what I recommend. Always have places for your AR calls, for your variables, and this since we'll have x and y, and then your returns. Okay, so what would fun 4 4 return? Now, we're going to start from the bottom since it just makes, you know, it's, it's just cleaner that way. So, in the first pass, it would obviously be 4 and 4, x and y. 4 4. Now, look at this. Now, let's look through the method. If x equals 2, return x. Well, 4 is not equal to 2. So, we'll go to here. Else, return. 4 plus fun y minus 1 x. Now this right here, this is a strange condition because you may think, oh what, you're gonna like you're swapping this around? How is that possible? Well that's not that's not true. All you're doing is you're taking the value stored for y and inputting it into the x position. So what does that mean exactly? So y minus 1. What is what is the variable y? 4, right? And 4 minus 1 is 3. So, you know, that makes sense. So, well, actually, let's go ahead and do the, recur the return call. So, just put x plus, well, actually, that would be 4. I apologize. That would be, that would be 4 plus ar call 2. So, basically, this would be your second ar call. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. Once we actually get done with the recursion, how that all how all that works. So on the second pass, your x position, your x variable, remember, this and this are the same thing. This is referring to this. Same for right here. This y value is just representing the x value. So on the second pass, x is still the same. X is still four. Actually, well. Right, so 
let's, let's go ahead and solve for the y value. So 4 minus 1, 3. That takes place of the x value, so that would be 3. And then the y value, the ny that would be passed, is the value of x. And x is still 4. x never changed. Okay? So, now for the returns, you know, is x equal to 2? No, it's not. So, return x plus fun, y minus 1, x. So, now, in this case, we're going to do, what is, the value, what is the value of x? It's 3. So, it would be 3 plus ar3. And then, we're going to have ar3. And what's being passed this time? We're having y minus 1. What is y minus 1? It would be 3. Yeah. And then, what would be the value of x? The value of x is 3. All right, so that would be what that would be on the third pass. So it'd be three, three. Now is x equal, now is x equal to no, it's not. So do one more time. Three plus a r four. This is your fourth a r call on the stack. Remember that stack slide that I showed you. All right. So return fun y minus one x. What is three minus one? 2. And what is the value of x in this previous one? 3. So, this returns to, oh, wait, if x is equal to 2, return x. So, that's all it returns. So, now we start solving. So, right here, this returns 2. This is paired with this. Two, e, two is AR4. So, 3 plus AR4, which is 2, equals, we'll make it a different color, just 2, uh, just to make that kind of obvious. 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, now, 5 equals AR3. So, so, in this call, this would be, I do apologize if you know that background noise, that is really annoying. Um, on this call, in AR2, it's 3 plus AR3. 3 plus 5 is 8. So again, 8 is AR2. So 4 plus 8 is 12. And then all these are removed as you go through them. So, just know that. So, the final answer fun 4 4 would return 12. I know I went through that kind of slowly but I did it because recursion is kind of hard to understand if you don't know like how to actually work through it and how the process works in memory and these AR stacks and this is mainly for the AP exam so if you want to do some recursion and some stuff and you know there may be some questions on recursion on the AP exam and you don't have a compiler there with you to work it out so you need to understand recursion and how it works. I'll put 12. All right. Now strings. Ooh. All right. So you may think, oh god, strings. Oh god. All right. So no. <laughs> all right. So what should we keep track of this time? We don't have any x and y's, but we do have s, and we do have len. All right. So again, we're gonna have ar. We're gonna have s. We're going to have len, and we're going to have r, which is our return. So on the first AR call, s is going to be a, b, c. The length of it, you know, len equals s.length, which is 3. Now, if the length is greater than 0, which it is, return s.substring len minus 1 plus recur s dot substring 0 minus len or 0 len minus 1 so the substring so the substring method returns the position or the the string at the index if there's only one parameter in this case len minus 1 3 minus 1 is 2 so it will be everything past c or or whatever is at the index in this string at position 2 so everything this way like this way but the only thing in here is C of course so it would be C plus a r 2 remember 
This takes the place of AR when you actually start doing it. So, what would this do next time? This would recur, well, the method is recur, s dot substring 0, position 0, and then length minus 1. So, that would be 0 to 2. And the way my teacher taught me how to do this is how the way you can figure out how many characters are in the substring is to take the first parameter and then just subtract it by the second parameter. So in this, or the second parameter and subtract it by the first parameter. So in this case, it'd be 2 minus 0 equals 2 characters in that substring. Okay. So in AR2, this would be calling 0, 2. And what this is, this means, so basically the way it is, it's the first parameter is inclusive, which means it will include this, but the second parameter is exclusive, which means it will be everything with this parameter minus 1. So in that sense, it just means A and B in this case. Okay, then what is the length of that? Int len equals s dot length. Okay, s dot length is two. You know, one two obviously. So is len le is len greater than zero? Yeah. So s dot substring length minus one. Two minus one is one. So this time it will just be b plus a r three. And again, a r three. And sometimes and usually you'll notice patterns in this. So just keep that in mind. In this sense, 0 len minus 1, so 0, so it'd be 0 minus 1, then it'd be at position, it'd be at this uh, part of the string. Since all you have now is A and B, and you're calling substring 0, 1, which will just be the first character, because you can't do negative 1, 0. Okay? So the length of that is 1, obviously. So it'd be uh, S dot substring length minus 1, so it'd be this right here plus AR4. Now, you don't have anything for AR4. You just have an empty string, so length is 0, so just return an empty string. Now, either way, just make sure you add that to this. I mean, it doesn't make sense to, but just know like everything adds on as you go. So, empty string plus, or A plus empty string is A. <laughs> okay, then B, remember, this takes, I do apologize, um, this takes place of, the, like, this empty string will take place of argument, of argument 4. So, just know that. And then down here, this right here, whatever this returns, which in this case it's just A, will take place of argument 3. Or, I don't say argument, um, activation record, I do apologize. So basically, in this case, it'd be B plus A. And what is that? You know, B, A, obviously. So then that would take the place of AR2. And then for this one, C plus AR2, C plus BA is C, B, A. And then there you go. All right. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So this one would take a lot of... This one... Uh... Well, actually, oh boy, I don't even have a tester up for it. Well, in the sense, I'm not really going to explain what all this does. Um, in the sense, what this would do is, if you know what the index of method does, it returns the first in, like, okay. One thing I will say, before you watch this video, I probably should put this in the, in the beginning or something. You do need to know basic Java stuff before you watch this video. You know, this is not this isn't like a beginning Java tutorial. You need to know some Java before you before you get to this video. But in short, the index sub method when called on a string will return the first index that search value appears in a string. For example, we'll have H E L J A B C H E L L O H E Y. So, what are the indexes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, hold on. We found the string. H-E-L-L-O. And I believe that's at position 7. Right, okay. Actually, 
Yeah, we'll make that a little bit we'll make that a little bit neater. I do apologize. I have a very high sensitive mouse. So we'll just do A B C We'll just do that. So it'd be at position zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So basically what this method is trying to do is it's trying to find all of the occurrences of this word hello in this string, in this parameter string, and it will return that. Okay? So what this is gonna do is every time it finds it, you know, if this search value occurrence is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, and this will return the position three. Okay? Because this is where this whole entire string is found in this long string. Just pretend this is this is the parameter word. So if it does, it's gonna return one plus count words, which is the method, words.substring. Now this is where it gets confusing. So it's gonna return a string, it's going to return an integer, but it's gonna be calling the recursion method at the same time. Basically, just know this in short. If you have an integer, then it will add up those integers every time, and basically what the total of them is after the after the method or the recursion call is done will be just the total of all these numbers. Okay? But every time you run through this method, it will just be looping through it and checking to see if the value, like, just, okay. Uh, I guess I'm getting too ahead of myself. Let's just go with this method does. So it'd be words not substring zero to words dot index of search value. So that'd be zero to this position. Now remember, it does not include the second parameter of substring. If there are two parameters in the substring method, it will only include the first one. The second parameter will be exclusive. So that just means that it will include this right here in this string that's making. Then it's concatenating why not say big string? I do apologize. That should say word. Word. Dot index of search value. And that just means, so that, that would return three at position three, plus the search value dot length. Now, the search value length is five. Search value is hello. The search value length is five. So three plus five is eight. Now, when a certain now, like I said, when the substring parameter has, or when the substring method only has one parameter, it will go from that position all the way to the end. So it will start from it will start from J and then go all the way down to AC. So this entire thing will concatenate to be a string that will be returned as ABC JAC, and then there are no more occurrences of the word hello in this so it will just return one alright so I hope that cleared things up with what recursion is um, I do apologize if I kind of ran through it um, I try my best to keep it slow and steady um, also one more thing these slides were not these slides were not entirely made by me I edited them a little bit but they were provided by my AP computer science A teacher and those were provided by the A plus comp sci um, corporation or whatever. <laughs> so just know that I did not make these slides. Okay? Alright, so if you have any questions about recursion or anything, or anything really AP Computer Science A related, um, leave them in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next video. Alright? See you guys then.